Andres, happy to be with you today. Uh, welcome to your final round interview. We're ready for the case portion. You ready? I am ready. Thank you so much. All right. Great. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our client. Um, so you're on a team that's been staffed on a project with Revolutionary Internet. Revolutionary Internet is a leading ISP, internet service provider, based in the United States. Disruption in the industry from the pandemic and increased competition from innovators like Elon Musk's Starlink really hasn't been kind to the company. Profits were down significantly in 2020, and the CEO recently announced that 2021 will be a reset year. He sees this setback as an opportunity to rebound and bounce back with aggressive revenue growth. Now within the organization, the CEO has been getting mixed messages on how to proceed, how to achieve that growth. Now one campus of the mind that revolutionary internet should ditch the internet service offering altogether and focus on their content creation. Another faction thinks the company should focus on connectivity alone. The final camp thinks that a balanced focus an approach on both is the best revenue growth strategy. Perfect. Um, great. So just if I could recap some of the information that just threw at me. Sure. Um, so we have that our client is um, revolutionary internet and they happen to be one of the leaders in the US. Um, of course, Elon Musk is there competing against every, everyone. So, um, Elon Musk with his company, Starlink, is one of our main competitors. We notice that our profits are currently down and um, we want 2021 to be a research year. Um, I, I was wondering if you could explain to me what a research year uh, specifically means. Um, and, and basically within this year, we want to aggressively uh, impact our revenue growth. Uh, and there were some options that you gave to me um, on the different perspectives that the company is trying to approach. But um, yeah, we just wanted to see if, if you could just clarify that one point for me first. Okay, sure. Um, so first, let me catch you on one piece. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Elon Musk Starlink company is really just a, an example of uh, the changing nature of this space in general. Wouldn't necessarily consider it like a, a key competitor at this stage. Uh, you know, the, the CEO of RI is looking for um, a reset year, yes, and all towards the growth, all towards the goal of aggressive revenue growth. Got it, perfect. Um, and then the different options that you mentioned were to either completely ditch the, the internet field, uh, just focus on our content creation and or focus on, on the connectivity aspect of the organization, correct? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we want to um, we want to create some revenue growth and therefore increase profitability. Um, so if I could just take a moment to sort of work on my framework, that's sure. okay with you. Sounds great. Thank you. Perfect. <clears throat> so this is a very interesting uh, project because we're trying to um, create some revenue growth. And, and when I like to talk about profitability problems, you can either always reduce costs, uh, but you can reduce costs only up to 0%. 
revenue is always something that you can increase tremendously. So, so that's always great because it allows a lot of creativity. So now when looking at the structure that I want to work on, so I have um, three main buckets. The first one being uh, my profitability. So trying to understand where our um, profits are being impacted and how much they're being down so far. Um, and then these will help us understand what a new profitability structure will look like in the future. Uh, second, uh, the market itself. So um, within the, the background that you've provided, it wasn't very clear to me uh, what a competitor landscape looks like. So um, understanding what these new changing uh, opportunities in the, in the field mean uh, in terms of the, of the competitors. And then within, uh, and then the, the next bucket being customers, I, I need to understand sort of what customers we we're tailored to. So going into each individual one of them, so um, I'm gonna try to keep it high level. And if you have any questions about the details of these, uh, feel free to ask. I, it's a little bit hard in Zoom to, to maintain an issue tree, but um, in, the, in the profitability, I want to know uh, specifically where we're being um, affected in our profits. Are we having increasing costs? Are we having uh, just um, lower revenues, losing of, of of the volume of the products that we sell and offer mm -hmm. uh, and understanding the specific services that we provide. Uh, within the market, it's understanding the market share and the market size of, of the different, um, the four initial options. I mean, the three initial options that you presented in the background, uh, the, the, in the internet, the content creation and the connectivity. And within the customer, um, I think it's very valuable to see what current trends we can see on customers and understanding um, what they want and uh, what are the biggest markets to, to sort of uh, pursue and expand with our new um, recent year and, and possibilities of things that we want to do. So within that structure, um, I think maybe if we can dive a little bit more into the background of the market itself and the customers that I mentioned, and then jump in a little bit into data of profitability to see what are the most feasible options for us. Um, it's an approach that maybe I would like to pursue. Okay. Um, and, and all under the CEO's goal of aggressive revenue growth, correct? Correct. All right. So where then would you like to start? Um, Yes. So um, are we, so I mentioned that um, maybe understanding the profitability behind the individual opportunities, like how profitable is the content creation, how profitable is the connectivity itself, how much profit are we losing by ditching the internet uh, section. So um, I wanted to see, first of all, what um, our profits and and I mean, what the revenue is in each one of these sections and what our fixed and variable costs are within them. Um, that will be one data point that I will really appreciate. And then the second one is you make a key point on aggressive revenue growth. So, mm -hmm. I mean, aggressive means differently for each company. So I wanted to know if maybe you had a specific targeted amount of growth that you're expecting in a specific timeline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Several good questions. Yes. Um, so the CEO has not given us a specific concrete number yet in terms of the revenue growth that they're pursuing. Um, and, you know, we really haven't been given a lot of cost data either. So um, that's not really you know, going to be a main focus of our efforts. Got it. Okay. So if that is if cost is not so much of a focus, do we have anything in terms of the revenue uh, in each one of the segmentations, just to understand how um, our company diversifies its, its revenue streams? Hmm. And, and how would you think about those segments? Yeah, so um, initially I think of um, the, 
uh, I will think of with your question, you mean a little bit more of like what I think uh, each one of the segments has greater market share within our revenue segmentation. Is that what your question is? Yeah, well, well when we say revenue, you when you say segments, that could mean various different things. And I'm curious, you know, if, if what, what type of segment? Oh, what, yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, for example, like we have within the connectivity, so the services that we provide within connectivity is do we have, uh, we, do we sell the product to, to larger corporations? Do we sell it to individual customers? Uh, within the content creation, um, is it mainly through any specific platform? Do we receive mm -hmm. um, the, do we receive, uh, or is there a monetization through, um, I don't know, through clicks, through visits, through, um, through amount of content that we sell specifically? Um, and, and if we were to approach an, an opportunity like just completely going off of the internet um, industry part of it, so like how much revenue we'll be losing in that specific sector? Mm -hmm. Lots of good questions in there. You know, some of what you said certainly points to the fact that we just need to understand a little bit more about this company, what the yeah. real offering is, what they're doing. Um, so I can tell you that, you know, um, Revolutionary Internet offers a low speed connectivity service. They also do create and provide content to those customers. Um, you could think online articles, stories videos and and print type. Um, now, some of this content is proprietary. We do also partner with uh, various content providers. Um, and um, the this content, um, it it is there's a little bit of a lead time to it. It, it takes six to twelve months to complete. Um, but if we think about those two different pieces of the business, connectivity and then content creation, um, that's, you know, that's at least some, some basic level information of, of kind of what, what's going on here at RI. Got it. Thank you. And um, going off in the, in the line of um, understanding a little bit more of, of the company itself, Mm -hmm. When when we talk about ditching the internet uh, field, the internet sector, what is specific um, part of it? Or like we talked about connectivity, we offer the lowest bit connectivity for our customers. Mm -hmm. What is ditching ditching the internet mean exactly for us? Um, so in terms of the the one faction within the company that believes we should only focus now moving forward on content creation mm -hmm. and no longer offer an internet service connectivity, no longer be truly an internet service provider in that, in the purest form of that. Um, so there, there is a section of the company that thinks that that is the way forward. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I can see that being a, uh, a huge interest, especially um, since since the internet sector is changing so much so rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe I just wanted to explore within these two options that we currently have, and maybe uh, as as we gather data, trying to understand what other possibilities we we might have for the company to pursue. Mm -hmm. So I, I noticed that within the content development and and presentation there is a lag uh, in between and, and it tends to be uh, a pretty large amount of time um, that we'll, we, all, we will only be seeing results until later on um, compared to like a low speed connectivity, which if we make changes, we can see them more rapidly in, in our revenue streams. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel like I need to understand a little bit more in context where our company stands compared to other organizations. So like if we were to ditch the, uh, the internet sector, uh, why would we be doing so? If, if we're a major player, for example, and, and we hold a large percentage of the, market, um, of the market share, then it wouldn't be too feasible. Maybe we can do some tweaking around within the product service that we offer rather mm -hmm. than just completely switching around. So I, I don't know if you have any, any data respecting the, the market share and the market size of the low speed connectivity and, and maybe the content creation as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, well, you you did ask about our competitors, right? So I, I can tell you that the competition, competition in general in this space, this low speed dial up space really has been fierce. Uh, it's been driving our the prices down overall across the market. Um, then you, we were also, uh, you wanted to look at uh, market share, right? So I can tell you that uh, currently RI has 45 million customers in the US. Um, a year ago, they had 60 million customers. Well, that's a pretty large decrease. Mm -hmm. That's 25% of our customer base. Um, last year, no. Um, and do we expect these these downward in in amount of customers to keep decreasing? Was there like a, an introduction of a new product and did you sort of switch that one time or is this gonna be an accelerated downward growth? Well, we definitely uh, know that the client wants to take this time working with us and focus their strategy on certainly mitigating that loss and reversing it if at all possible. Um, but again, all towards revenue growth. Got it. Perfect. Um, so I think you 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 bring a, a key point there, and it's about trying to reverse this this lost in revenue, this lost in customers. So it sounds to me that the client is still open to the idea of improving its its current uh, sector and the lowest speed connectivity, and trying to regain that that customer base and therefore increasing their their revenues there. Um, so, um, in terms of, you, you mentioned that the competitors are, extre are being extremely fierce and is it through the uh, implementation of new products? Is it through, um, them having lower costs, therefore reducing the, the, the prices of, of the products that we currently have? Can we match that at any point? So maybe if you had information in terms of, um, the, the product segmentation from our competitors, how unique our products are, and if we can diversify ourselves a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, at this stage, what, what we know and what we're focusing on is, you know, we believe that for a, a section of our clients, it, it really is important to them, the, those internet speeds. And we are at the moment just a low speed provider. Yep. Um, but for other of our customers, they really are price sensitive. And so, um, yes, the overall market pressure, uh, our pressure from our competitors has been driving down price across the board. So uh, for these different segments of customers, we, we find that they have different needs. Got it. And then um, not familiar with the um, internet connectivity um, sector, but like in my head, it wouldn't sound too hard to switch from a low speed to a higher speed. Maybe it's a couple of investment, like a one-time investment into um, uh, increasing the signal uh, in, in different locations. So maybe if you could explain to me what it would look like to, to switch from a low speed to a higher speed, if, if this is even feasible, or if it will require just enormous amounts of, of investment. Andres, why don't I actually put that back on you for a second? Why don't you just take a minute and think about, you know, to the degree that you understand this space, what do you think some of the costs would be associated with developing a broadband high-speed product offering? Yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> uh, let me just take that minute. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so 
when I think about the costs, I'm thinking about a variable cost and a fixed cost. Within the fixed cost, I immediately think of how much this new technology advancement is going to cost me. I think that's going to be the major um, uh, cost in this uh, one-time approach. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm seeing this as, I don't know, having um, more receptors around the country or having uh, um, better um, signal uh, transmitters. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, not quite sure. And then uh, within the variables, um, I'm assuming that this technology is going to create um, new services that we need to provide in a yearly basis. So um, labor is going to be divided in like technicians um, that are going to come in and, and do the repairments. Uh, it's going to be also into the, the volume of uh, how the product will look like. I don't know if we provide this service through like the boxes of Wi-Fi that we have at home, or if we provide it to larger customers and companies, um, therefore providing more like um, larger um, capacity ones, mm -hmm. or if it's just like through whichever way that that product will look like, the cost of that volume um, will be another variable that I see, um, another variable cost that I see, and probably some R&D under the fixed cost because it's going to be a new adventure for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then, if we were to look at um, when we when we get to to analyze the data within these costs of um, what it will cost to switch to a higher speed, we will we will then look at okay, is this even going to be feasible? Um, with the amount of customers that we have, how many customers are they gonna be switching or, or we need to analyze what the return of investment will potentially be in terms of, um, of how much we invest in the customers that we'll have to gain to, to come up to a break-even point. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned that a lot of our customers are price sensitive. So um, understanding that we're gonna to have to be Within a within a, a lower range of, of price, it's probably going to expand that return on investment time a little bit more. Is it going to be something that we're going to look for potentially? Um, that being within the lowest speed connectivity, um, uh, specifically, and then within the development and presentation of content, we will also need to understand. Um, what our business model is there in terms of how much content we create, who are our targeted customers, and how the revenue streams in there look like. Great. I think those are a lot of good ideas. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, the, the, the technology aspect, um, the various kind of overhead pieces that are going to be involved, but also we're going to have to understand the 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 content development piece, the advertising piece, et cetera. Um, so I think you have, you know, I think you've got a good base understanding of maybe what that would take. Um, again, today, we're just at that low speed dial-up connectivity, mm -hmm. plus some of that content creation that we do in-house. We partner with others, um, you know, but back back towards our, our main focus and main goal here, um, what else do you think that you might want to understand towards the CEO's objective? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, trying to understand aggressive revenue growth within the CEO's per perspective, um, I can see how um, <laughs> increasing costs under the lowest speed connectivity, it's definitely going to have a toad on the on the revenue for a, for a while until we see changes on on increased revenue. Um, so not so much for aggressive revenue there. Um, the development of the content is something that we already have, um, unless we spend a lot more money on developing better content and uh, therefore selling more of it, we're not gonna um, also see aggressive revenue growth there. So I'm trying to think about what other options um, could look like in terms of um, in, terms of, in terms of the company capabilities, and maybe if there were some synergies with any specific trends going on around the market right now, 
um, that we could explore. That is a complete mm-hmm. new, uh, complete new venture, but at the same time, it doesn't require a lot of initial investments that we can explode into into an aggressive revenue growth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it does it does seem interesting to us as we've looked at the trends in our current and previous customer base. You know, looking at that and understanding that there's a segment that is price sensitive, and understanding that there's a segment that you know really cares about. Uh, the 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 speed of their internet. There's there's another segment that cares about uh, convenience and simplicity. So, what what do you think about that? Um, and by convenience and simplicity, we mean in in terms of um, ease of use of the product. Yeah, that uh, it's that it's easy to set up and maintain. Um, and I was wondering, do we have any, uh, I, I know sometimes we, we can have a data representation in terms of how we're hitting those targets of, of, um, of price sensitivity, of higher speed, of convenience simplicity, which within higher speed, I'm, I'm expecting a low, um, a low rating, but compared to our competitors and see, um, and see where we're focusing a little bit more of our, um, of our uh, sort of costs, mm-hmm. and not to generate more costs, but maybe what uh, we need is a restructure on on our our cost, uh, our in-house costs. So, for example, per se. Um, let me think of something in the spot. So per se, let's say we're spending a lot of money on the development and presentation of content. Let's say these doesn't, these weren't to bring us a lot of revenue, but it seems that high speed is what people want right now. And it's what's going to increase our revenue tremendously. So maybe shifting the, the cost that we, that we currently have allocated to, to the development and presentation of content towards increasing that higher speed or the other way around could mm-hmm. something that we could potentially do. So um, I'm not sure if you have any customer satisfaction surveys that could tell us how we're being um, graded in, in the individual segmentations of, of the customer preferences. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have a customer satisfaction surveys, but we do certainly know some about our client base and their Mm -hmm. desires in these areas. What we've actually found quite interestingly is that these needs really very have a high correlation with age group. So if we look at, you know, segmentation of our customers based on age, we find that, you know, there's a section of our customer base that's under 20 years old. And for this group, they really largely are focused and driven by price. They're looking for cheap connectivity. They're very price sensitive. Um, then if we look at the, our customers that are aged 20 to 45, we find that this group is really focused on internet speed. They have a, a higher need for high-speed connectivity, and there's a higher desire for that broadband service. Um, then if we look at our customers older than 45 years of age, we find that they are um, very driven by convenience and simplicity of the product. Got it, perfect. <clears throat> and then um, do we have any information in terms of how, um, what percentages of customers we have for each, each one of these different age groups? Yeah, great question. So um, about a year ago, you know, we knew that we had 5 million customers under 20. We had 35 million customers between the ages of 20 and 45. We had 20 million over the age of 45. Now for those youngest customers, about half a million of them have left in the last year. For the middle age group, 10 million left. For the highest age group, 4.5 million left. Got it. So I, um, sorry, can you repeat under 20, what our initial value was? 5 million a year ago. Got it. So um, I see that I can understand why under 20, it's not so much of our market. I mean, I'm always 
stealing Wi-Fi from whatever I can get it for free. Mm -hmm. um, but 20 to 45, a little bit more subtle people that already work, work from home now. Um, we have a tremendous amount of, of our customers share there. In fact, is, um, let's see, 25, um, 30, 60. So is a little bit more than 50% of our, of our uh, customer segmentation. Um, and we see a complete decrease on it. So we have 10 million of customers that have left. And we know that from previous year or from the overall one, we, we had, um, oh, sorry, my, I apologize. My customer base just doesn't add up. You initially said that last year we had 60 million customers and now we have about 45 million customers. Mm -hmm. And when we did the breakdown, we said we had 5 million under 20, 20 to 45, 35 million and over 45, we have 20 million and Sorry, sorry, that, that is 60 million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, no, so what I was trying to say is we had a, a loss of 15 million customers in total, mm -hmm. and that 10 million that left plays a, ma a major role there. So I think mm -hmm. going specifically into that section will definitely uh, create the highest impact on um, our revenue growth. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, when we were talking about cost into switching to a higher speed, within my understanding is that we will have to do larger, larger investments uh, into these um, specific um, customer segmentation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know, um, I'm a little bit tied on the part that we don't have any data Within the cost, within the cost itself of switching into higher speed, um, so maybe exploring a little bit more of what it would look like to increase um, efforts into, let's say, the forty-five plus, which are more into the convenience and simplicity, and we seem to be doing okay in that sector. So maybe shifting a little bit of our uh, product from the twenty to forty-five into the the forty-five, if that's mm -hmm. something that that we might be even considering. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if um, we have any information in terms of um, if are, are these all the same product that we offer? Do they all do we do, they, do we get the same revenue from from them in individually per volume based, like per unit based or or like for under the 20, we offer like, I don't know, student pricing and then 20 to 45, we offer a more, um, a larger package. Um, yeah, th there is a little bit of variability in our pricing, but just, just like many other uh, internet services, it's a subscription model when okay. the average price is about $40 a month. <clears throat> so Andres, given what you know now and what you know uh, about our objective, what recommendation would you give to our client? Yeah, definitely. So um, if I could just take a minute to- Absolutely. Thank you. Um, great. So um, this was a very interesting case, specifically since we have a very um, um, a very overachieving goal, which is to switch into an aggressive revenue growth, especially when we're fighting against uh, faster changes in technology. Mm -hmm. So within the the, the scope of the of the analysis that we just did, we we noticed that there is a downward growth of about 25% of the customers that we're losing. Um, and we see that most of it is due to um, technology changes. So mm -hmm. within our customer segmentation, we're losing 10 million customers that are very, very interested in that high speed um, uh, point. 
And um, we think that in order for us to, to, to jump into that wave of increasing revenue, um, the, the, there is a potential of doing an initial investment towards switching from low speed connectivity into high speed connectivity because we can, we, we're already leaders in the US and we can um, maintain some market share and therefore uh, maintain some of the customer segmentations that we have and increasing revenue. Um, I think there, there is some need to further analyze what this initial investment will look like and how feasible it is in, in terms of years. But um, overall, I think there, there is a lot of opportunity to do the growth um, as well in, in the development and, and presentation of content. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Andres, how do you think that went? <clears throat> um, so <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the um, notion that it was like very, uh, it was very different how the data was provided. So it was like a very storytelling case to me. And I was having a lot of difficulty trying to gather that data that will help me analyze um, different possibilities, different options. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed to me that there was a lot of, uh, it was more of like a brainstorming case type of, of deal. Um, I think that I'm good at brainstorming and bucketing when those questions are asked. But I think at the beginning, I lost a lot of time because I didn't really understand the background or what the company did. Mm -hmm. So then I was trying to um, sort of maybe fit any structure or trying to uh, play along like I knew what the, what, the, what the product that we sold was, maybe hoping that at some point you will um, unleash some of the, of the answers. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is not the best strategy going into one of these cases. And mm. I should just assume the mistake that I did not really understand what the product that we offer was. Mm. Um, so I think that would have helped me um, jump into, into conclusions a little bit sooner and drive more insights within the time frame. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are some good thoughts. Let me, so my, my summary overall to you is that um, you did okay. Uh, on this case, you, uh, I, I can see the potential in you because of your, uh, you, you know, you, you had a never ending stream of thoughts and ideas. You were very good at uh, verbalizing your thought process. And that let me understand where you were at every point in time. However, there was a lot of, um, there was some rambling at points. Uh, there was uh, some opportunity for you to be uh, crisper and more straight to the point about what you wanted to know. And then I could give you a check or give you an X and then we could move on. Um, and that idea that you just gave me of um, not fully understanding the, the context and background of the case and the product offering. Now it, it, that was, that became clear to me about halfway through, but with that context in mind, um, with that context in mind, to be honest, you did very well. However, you really did miss the opportunity off the top to be able to just lean into that a little bit more and to feel the freedom to lean into that. Um, you know, there's, uh, on one hand, I could say, oh, I feel that this is a fairly approachable case. Everybody has to get their internet from somewhere. You know, there's kind of low speed offerings, there's high speed offerings, but at the same time, there is a lot of complexity in this space, right? So the degree to which um, you want to ask and you want to be upfront, you know, you did really well about halfway through to say, I don't understand a lot. I don't have a lot of familiarity with this space. So dot, dot, dot. If you can imagine if you had done that off the top yep. and go ahead and ask your questions about, um, you know, just getting a better base understanding of the, the landscape um, and, and what the offering really was. Um, I would have been happy to share that with you and just kind of talk it through with you for a couple seconds to give you a little bit of a better understanding. Um, 
you know, in terms of um, withholding, in, in terms of withholding slash not fully offering you information, I would I would rate my own difficulty in giving you this case as about an eight out of ten. Um, you know, I I could have been a little bit worse, of course, but in general, I wanted to see fully where you wanted to go, and I wanted to have you ask for uh, specifically what you wanted. Um, now, with those thoughts in mind, let me go through just briefly chronologically through the case. Let's go through a couple of different points. Um, so up front with the prompt and then the recap, um, you, you gave about a 50 second recap and then I answered a question and then you had about 15 seconds more. Overall, the, the length of that conversation and the length of that portion I think was great. Um, the, the point of improvement there was in your first recap that you gave me, you asked a question about midway through. Okay. Um, and so if you could have withheld that to the end, that gives me a better confidence in you to not just have stream of consciousness mm -hmm. running through, right? So you give me your full recap, then you ask your question, I can respond. Um, we can do another round of that, you know, if you need, and then move on. Uh, you then moved into um, putting your framework together. And you really only took a little over a minute to put your structure together. Um, now, this will be on recording. You can go look back. I timed about a minute five. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's pretty low. Um, and so if you had any, you know, in terms of feeling out, you know, the length of time for that to take you, you, you could have offered yourself uh, a little bit more time to to do that that would have allowed you to go into a little bit more depth into your buckets and to make sure that that things were messy the way at least then that you described your framework back to me um you you told me a little bit about each bucket and then you you, you more fully went into each of the buckets i would probably appreciate more if you would have given me the overview of your buckets first in a, in a quicker manner okay. and then d dive into each. Um, I think that just what, when you, when you hear it back and you, you rewatch this, um, you know, I think that you'll agree with me on that. Um, then as you went through the buckets, um, uh, one, one thing that I mentioned that I, that I, that I caught was, um, in your customer bucket, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned markets, but then markets was your whole second bucket. Oh yeah. And so there was there was just a little bit of kind of unnecessary, I felt overlap there, um, mm -hmm. at least in the way that it came across on the page. Would you be willing to share to the camera what that framework looked like on your page? Yes, I have. Awesome, yeah, okay, market, customer. Yeah, we got profitability on the top, perfect. Awesome, thank you, thanks for sharing. Um, it became evident to me at this point in the case that somehow it had been a little more anchored in your head, the concept of profitability rather than pure revenue growth. And so I tried to uh, just plant a couple of seeds through the case to, to remind and to point back to the direction that it was aggressive revenue growth. It's revenue growth that we're focused on. We don't have a lot of information about costs at this point, right? Um, and those clues perhaps could have given you the direction to then look um, more directly and more quickly at, okay, well, what is revenue? Like, well, how yeah. many, you know, how are we, how are, is this company making money? You know, how do we charge our customers? How many customers do we have? What do we know about these different customer groups? How do we think about the different customer groups? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and when you mentioned segmentation, you, uh, I pushed you a little bit because I wasn't just going to give up the full customer segmentation data. You actually were asking at that point in time about product segmentation. Um, but the, the difference between our content offering and our, um, our internet, you know, connectivity offering, because it's just a subscription model, we don't really have a lot of information about, um, you know, what, what th there isn't, those things don't, don't drive revenue necessarily in different ways in the sense that our customers are paying one flat fee for a monthly subscription to this full, you know, suite of Got offerings. Um, and so 
you know, towards that, um, it was pretty late in the case then as well. You know, you, you did get to the point to ask about the, the billing, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of how we, how we make our money that overall, you know, we average $40 a month. Um, we did get to the point where I was able to share the, some of the customer data. Um, and you did, um, you did a couple, you know, you, you got the gist of what was there, right? It was that for this middle age segment, um, the highest percentage, it's the highest percentage of our customer base yep. traditionally and still, um, but also the highest percentage that, that left um, when we think about over the last 12 months. Now we know that that age group really is concerned with higher bandwidth needs and the desire for broadband services. Um, and so, um, there was, there wasn't, there was a chance, there was an opportunity to maybe, to maybe do a little bit more math with those yeah. numbers to be able to look at the, the percentages and the breakdown and fully understand, um, and be able to compare that to, uh, the other segments and, and come back at the end and, and tell me a little bit more about, um, why, you know, regaining or focusing on that segment is important in this overall goal of revenue growth. Um, but you did come around at the end and tell me that, um, you thought it was that this segment was important because we had lost 10 million customers from this segment. Um, I think that was great in terms of that overall final recommendation, you know, it would have been even better if you had, uh, put that into a percentage, even, you know, yeah, based on the overall customer base or based on that segment, uh, it would have taken it just one step further, right? Um, and then since we know that what's important to that group is bandwidth needs, and you had done a little bit of brainstorming on the various cost components of um, implementing a new broadband system, then bringing those insights back into your final recommendation um, would have also made that final uh, push better. Um, we did not get to the full depth of the case. Yep. Um, so there was an opportunity to um, also look at uh, the, uh, you know, when you would think about internet service provider creating or, you know, moving into a new broadband offering, they could create it themselves or they could kind of partner with other current providers and just offer that as a, uh, as a service to their customers. And so there was another piece that we could have gone into what that would have looked like um, to give you just a little bit more um, to your final recommendation about, mm -hmm. you know, yes, to achieve revenue growth. We wanna focus on this specific target segment. That specific target segment has these needs. You know, we, we know, and I, we would wanna look at the, the specific costs associated with that, you know, listing them out specifically. Um, and then whether or not you'd recommend that they create it themselves or, or partner with somebody else. But with that being said, you um, you got to you know ninety percent of the the depth of the case. Um, I think that you pulled out um, eighty percent of the right answer. Um, we we didn't get there in the most direct way, but yeah. you showed me very evidently that um, you were being thoughtful in your approach and in your questions, you were being very broad, um, you were being very creative, um, being very open about the way that you thought about it. Um, but the, the biggest thing that I think would have helped you drive towards success faster would be to try and catch those clues from the beginning prompt about what the, the overall key goal and objective of the project is. In this case, it was revenue growth and so I'm, I'm going to de-emphasize cost in my head off the bat. Yeah. Um, so, but with that being said, uh, I think that, you know, hopefully this is, this is a good example. I, I, I think that, you know, you're probably really ready for these interviews that, that you have lined up and, um, you know, with, with a couple more here at the end of the, uh, of your preparation, then, uh, I, I wish the best for you next week. Um, any other questions for me in terms of how we went through the case and what the pieces were there? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, it's this is amazing feedback. Um, I think that it, just yesterday, um, I went into looking that now consulting firms are 
focusing a lot more in into specific cases related to growth in mm. in revenue so i think this is probably going to be something that i should expect in at least one of the two cases that i have um and then i did have a question in terms of um you said that if you to feel to have the freedom to lean into that um that a question into understanding the background a little bit more of what the offerings are for us. How was how will one ask that a specific question without sounding just extremely unfamiliar with the with the case? Well, I think the point here is that if you are extremely unfamiliar with the space, then your chances of being successful and in going into depth in one of these cases is really diminished. Right. Mm -hmm. So we just, if we admit that off the bat, then we say, okay, what can I do about that? Um, I, I can tell you, I failed one of my first round interviews um, uh, when I was a first year MBA because I didn't lean into this at the beginning of the case. It was an oil and gas case. Mm -hmm. And I did not, um, I didn't understand the way that the prompt was laid out because I didn't understand the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, I realized from feedback from that interviewer and then reflection myself, if I would have at the front of that case started with what you did midway through and said, well, <clears throat> to be honest, I'm not familiar with this space. I certainly you know, in, in joining this project and starting on this objective, I'd want to better understand X, Y, Z, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, you could have started even with, what does it mean to be an internet service provider, yeah, right? I think that's so, a key question. And, then, and if that was your, your base level of, of getting caught up in it, then it's, it's better to ask that question up front and hear a quick response back from your interviewer. Um, You'll also then ga gauge their response to that if there's a little bit of abrasion. Um, but more than likely, you know, I mean, we, we all have to get up to speed when we start in a new industry. And so yeah. for you to ask a couple of clarifying questions up front to just to help you get your head around it, then it doesn't help. It doesn't hold you back as you go through the case. Got it. Yeah, um, I think I, I think that was my my main concern throughout the case. I was regretting the entire time that I did not ask that question because it did hold me back from fully um, studying the, the, the different possibilities in each one of the buckets. So definitely we'll do that uh, in my future cases, but thank you so much for, for doing this. Absolutely, best of luck to you. Thank you. Bye -bye.